Hello everybody, I am here for Wednesday's vlog and actually today we had a two hour delay. I live in Ohio and we had like a light dusting of snow but it was really cold outside so the roads were really slick. So we had a two hour delay. The roads were fine when I went to school. I live about 35 minutes outside my school district though and where I live nobody had a delay but the snow kind of like missed us and hit where I teach. So I had time this morning to read a little bit and I painted my nails and I finished up some laundry so I you normally get up at 5 30 they called off at 5 25 so I slept until 6 still got up and got ready and then got a little stuff done and I finished an audiobook and I have some book mail to show you so I will go ahead and talk about oh and I have my holiday sweater of the day which is just this really pretty Christmas tree this is my mother's sweater I borrowed it from her but I finished this and a lot of you commented on yesterday's vlog saying you didn't love this and I agree with you who listened to the audiobook. I really did not enjoy the narrator's voice. Part of it was what made it so boring and I hated his voice for women especially like any other character who makes sound really really old and I didn't love that about this book and it was pretty boring. Not a lot happened plot wise like this is a 10 hour audiobook which is pretty long like this book is 350 pages, 370 pages like what even happened? Nothing. She just had this baby. He stayed and took care of her. I will say, like, I laughed a little bit when her brother showed up. Like, that was a funny scene. But other than that, I didn't like it. And I also don't love books where the narrator like switches to different people especially if it's in third person so this is in third person and we get random like scenes from other people and I'm like I don't care about you and what you're doing like keep me with our main characters and so that's what this one did that's what Perils of Pleasure did as well by Julie Ann Long which I didn't love that book either so this I'm giving two and a half stars I just like did not care for the characters they fell in love like in two days and I did like the fact that they were hiding who they really were like she was a lady and he was also titled and they hid that from each other which I thought was fun but other than that I just didn't love this and I'm so annoyed that we chose a book that was not good and you obviously don't know like none of us have read it we just looked at good read reviews it had decent reviews so that's why we chose this one it was snowed in together hiding your like social class but it just like was not the best so I'm sad and I'm sorry if you read this because of us I feel like I should have done what Rachel from Rachel Reason Sings and just DNF it at 25% but I stuck it out I want it I feel like as a host I should read our book so I stuck it out but I'm happy to report I'm reading two books next I have a physical book and an audiobook and I'm loving them so first one that I'm obsessed with I'm gonna gush about this book I love Kate Bateman I love the first two books in the series I read physically the first one listen to the second one on audio my library does not have this third book on audio so I'm physically reading it but oh my goodness I I told you they meet at a brothel and he's like I want you I'll give you 500 pounds like spend the night with me and she's like no but they kiss and she's really intrigued and it just so happens she is like a companion for this older woman and she loves her job and a guy from her past is in town and like looking for her as a lost princess and he was vile he was disgusting and so she doesn't want to be found by him and our hero is a bow street runner but he also is the nephew I think of her the person she's a companion for and so they're on their way I think to Edinburgh for a couple weeks and they get robbed by highwaymen and he comes racing down with a horse because he's supposed to help escort them but she doesn't know our heroine so I think they're gonna be stuck in Edinburgh together and I'm so excited like this romance is so good his friends are joking with him that he finally found someone who like denied him I love it so so much I'm only like 70 pages in yeah I got to page 70 yesterday and this morning and yesterday I think I was on page like 50 so I read 20 more pages this morning literally obsessed I love this book so much and I can't wait to read more tonight though I do have to watch Survivor with my sister which I'm very excited for I'll probably write Goodreads reviews while I watch that because I'm very far behind on that but I also have a knitting project I'm working on that I'm pretty far behind on as well I don't know if I'll do anything in my bullet journal today I'll probably take a break from that but definitely excited to read this so I also started I'm only 15 minutes into it but it's already like 10 times better than the Grace Burroughs book is An Affair with a Notorious Heiress by Lorraine Heath. This is book four in this series. And I don't remember what the series is called but it's a spin-off to the Scoundrels of St. James series because it's the other St. James series and it's the kids of that series and so it's Franny's son which I'm super excited about because I read the other three before reading the Scoundrels of St. James. The Scoundrels of St. James are the parents and then it's the kids and I wish I had waited. I didn't know that there was a spin-off but 
I really wish I had waited, but I'm happy reading book four after because he talks about his parents and um, the Duke and Duchess of Lovingdon, which are other characters, and it's just amazing. And he was definitely bullied because of the fact that his mother, Franny, was low class and married his father, who was a Duke, and it was really hard to read, but he has definitely become very hardened and strong because of it, and they talk about that. And this is just the prologue, but what happens, it's like a fake courting, but only he knows he's fake courting her. He is given a deal that he will get this horse that he really wants, if he courts this woman whose sister has a bad reputation and they're like court the sister and she'll get suitors it's kind of like with um the duke and i where simon had to like fake court daphne so that she would get suitors so he has to fake court because he's the son of a duke and um but she doesn't know but it's going to be his relationship with her sister who had the scandal and she says like something fishy is going on with this guy who's courting her sister so it's kind of also like the viscount who loved me where anthony was kind of courting kate's sister and kate fell in love with him so i'm so ready for this i'm so excited i'm only 15 minutes in i don't know how much i'll listen to today but i am pumped because yes and i only have one more day of school i probably if i don't have to cover i'll have hall duty and i'm so excited to listen to more of this but tomorrow's my friday and then i have actual friday off and i'm very very excited. I am so excited, but I have some book mail to show you. So I did get Forbidden by Carlos Renson from Jill. So thank you so much to Jill for sending this to me. She sent this to me as a Christmas present. This is one of my favorite reads of the year, a new favorite author of mine, and it's such a good contemporary romance. It's a forbidden romance. I loved it. I've gushed about this all the time. So I'm so excited to have that physically. Then I got two books from eBay because I saw this one book on someone selling it and they were selling it for like six dollars. I was like, I can bet I can find it in a lot. So I did. I found these both for like six dollars. So it is Sea Flame by Valerie Vale, and it's actually part of a series. So that we have Oriana, and then we have Sea Flame, and I'm pretty sure I'm missing book one though. But they are both about sailing. So this one says, "Daughter of the Savage Highlands, child of the swarm storm swept seas." So she is a Bi Viking princess in this one. So that sounds really good. She's braved the icy seas and her father's ships with a spirit no man can match. And he is an adventurer. That sounds so good. And then this one, it looks like, oh my god, she she's a pirate. Like, it says the devil's daughters. So it was in their blood, passion and piracy. They're reunited, I guess. And she is an infamous lady pirate. So she's charmed her way from England shores to the highest courts of France. Haunted by the spy she loved. Like, oh my gosh, these sound like so good. Oh, and she's married to a count, and it says she's enslaved to the count she married. So this, like, so dramatic, bodice-ripping romance that I'm so, so excited for these. So this is Valerie Vale, who the author is. These are gonna be good. I'm so excited. And I also wanted to show you my Mystic Box. I never opened it for you guys. And I have it, and I always put it up here in my library, and I always forget to show it to you. So it is M. Robinson, who the author is. And so the pin is like ballet shoes, and it says El Diablo's Carino, which I'm assuming is from. Sorry, my accent is awful for that Spanish. But this is, um, the pin is always from a book and it always comes with like a little art booklet so this is the art booklet for her and oh it actually has a like graphic novel in here so we have the art and then it's showing that and that goes on for a few pages that's really cool oh and then it has a q a with the author i don't remember them having like all of this stuff in here cool and then it says what she's currently reading listening to watching celebrating that's fun. I thought it was usually just photos, so that's really cool. And then the books are always hardback. I was sent this by them for free because I'm a rep for Mystic Box. The two books are always hardback, and it doesn't come with anything except for the books and the booklet and a pen. So the two, oh, that's so pretty. The two books, okay, yeah, we have El Diablo, which is this one, and they come wrapped now, which is really nice. And then we have Sinful Arrangement and it's this one so definitely the skull theme we got black with gold super pretty they have done penelope douglas before too which is amazing i'd love them to do gianna darling but these are so so pretty that's super exciting and i believe they're both signed as well this one's really fun because it's like a king and queen i have not read these but i'm excited to try out m robinson and have these really really gorgeous special editions so i wanted to show you guys that because i haven't gotten around to showing them on social media yet 
So I'm excited to have those. I also just did stop by CVS because if you didn't know, CVS like hands out 40% off coupons like candy. Like once a week I get one. So last week I get, went and got pens for myself and this week I went and got pens for my coworker as part of her Christmas gift. I did end up ordering the Bridge Kingdom and then I'm giving her a set of pens. They're like Bic no smear pens. She's a lefty and so I think they'll be nice for her. And yeah, I think that's all I had to share with you guys. I did end up doing a Q&A on Instagram where I asked you guys questions you wanted me to answer during these because I wanted to give you a little bit more detail because I feel like yesterday's was pretty short because I was exhausted yesterday but also because I didn't have a lot of content to share with you so I did ask and got some questions. So maybe a little later I'll go through some of the questions and answer them just to make this a little more interesting. Some asked about my skincare routine and I will say I have just been really lucky to have really good skin. My sister has goes to dermatologists. Like she has had not the best skin growing up. We're twins and I just so happen to not have any problems. And I do get bumpy skin sometimes, but I rarely get a pimple. And if I do, it never like becomes a thing. It just like goes away. But I will show you the stuff in my bathroom I can of what I use at night, my face wash and like all the serums they put on. I don't put on like a ton. And I'm not like a professional, so if I do something wrong, I'm sorry, but I can show you guys my bathroom if you want me to. I am a little not embarrassed, but like self-conscious sometimes of showing my house because I'm so thankful that I'm successful enough to be able to live in a house on my own and afford it with my sister, but it's not like aesthetically pleasing. There's so many people on Instagram and on YouTube who have just these super nice houses that are so nicely decorated and have an aesthetic. They're like super white and nice and like I can't do that. First of all, if I had any white furniture, my dogs would ruin it within like two seconds. They get muddy all the time and they go they love going outside and playing and it's just like no, I and I'm messy. I spill on my the tablecloth the minute my sister puts a new one on the table. Like she will change out sometimes the placemats because she likes to change things in the house and I'll always spill on it it's my dad's fault I got it from my dad he spills all the time but I just feel like my house isn't like something to show off I'm always a little self-conscious that like my stuff is not as nice and aesthetically pleasing and put together I'm just a normal person who works all the time and has this as my second job that I don't have time to make everything pristine and be like a home decorator so not everything is like organized like that like my family room I feel like it's just like a normal family room not something that's like should be in a magazine but I feel like a lot of people on social media show that and I'm like I shouldn't show my house because it's not like a social media house if that makes sense I don't know I just I just feel weird but I wanted to share that with you guys because it's a realistic look at someone who is an influencer I guess I don't consider myself an influencer but I am on social media and I just feel like I'm a normal person and I feel like self-conscious like I'm not having as like gorgeous of a home as other people do because that's not where I put my like time attention and money into if that makes sense I just thought I'd share that as a realistic look at someone who does share their life online, but my sister's gonna make some delicious tortellini soup. It's my favorite. We had it for the first time like a month ago and it was amazing. So I'll probably help her make dinner and check my emails and then read some and of course watch Survivor with her. I don't know if she'll wanna watch another show, but yeah. And later on, I'll answer some questions. I didn't get too, too many, but I'm just excited to share more with you and have my last day of school tomorrow. So I still have half of this readathon left and I've been reading amazing books finally. Like. I got to my first five-star read yesterday, but that was my fourth book. So, was it my third book? Might have been my third book. I think I've read four now, which it's just disappointing when I read a two-star read and I'm filming it and I'm just like, it's not good. I don't like sharing about books I don't love, but the fact that I can gush to you about this makes me happy. And that Lorraine Heath, which I think I might, I do own it. So I'll have to get that so I can show it to you guys when I talk about it. But I'm gonna go. I've already been talking for way too long and help my sister with dinner and then talk to you guys later. Welcome to my bathroom. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that I use. This is just how everything looks. So over here, my actually this is what I use in my hair. I spray it with this heat protectant. I don't even know, Red Ken heat protectant. And then I use Curl Smith. I used to use this and it has like barely anything left. So I use this and then I have a little bit of this in there and that's what I do with my hair every morning. Oh, my electric toothbrush. So first I use this. It's I love this to take off my makeup. It's just like a not foam but like soapy kind of feeling thing and it takes all my makeup off I love it so much I got the big bottle from Amazon because small bottles don't do it and then after washing with that I do wash with Vanna cream 
I wash that in the shower too, so I have both in the shower. And there, oh, this is the sunscreen I use to run. I know it's super expensive. My sister bought it for me um, because she's like super into face care and sunscreen and stuff. And I have this sunscreen as well, which is like a daily sunscreen. I don't really use it in the winter. Um, then after those two though, I go in with this take off like any excess makeup I did not catch and then sometimes I saw this trick so I had like really bumpy skin on my forehead and my cheeks so they said dandruff shampoo actually helped with that so that's why I have that um, to put on my face which I use that occasionally if I ever have textured skin and then I put this on which is my CeraVe retinol serum and then oh this is just full of my <laughs> this stuff for when I travel that stays there and then I use this CeraVe um, SA cream, again, my only thing is that I get textured skin, so that's what that is for. And then my all-time favorite, cap it all off, is this. You can see I've used almost all of it. It's my Laneige Lip Sleepy Mask, which I actually have. I have, like, some skin care stuff that I don't totally use anymore, so that's why there's all these, like, little bottles I tried out. These three I bought in a set, so we got this, which is literally the same thing as that. It's just newer packaging and then it came with the gingerbread and the peppermint i really wanted the peppermint but they were sold out on sephora so i got the peppermint and gingerbread samples and the large size of what i already use at night helps my lips so much but yeah that's it i don't think you care about what i use for <laughs> my toothpaste and then i have floss and that's really it oh i do really enjoy this scrub that i'll use occasionally um, it just makes my skin feel super soft after using it. So yeah, that's really all I do. Everything in here. So I hope you enjoyed that little walkthrough of my face routine. So we just finished watching 911. And this is the scarf that I'm working on knitting. It's a super easy pattern that I've made a few times. So this is just to keep the stitches in place so that I can bind off and, well not bind off, but like take it out and then stitch this side to the other side. So this is, it's got tons of dog hair in it too because I just do everything with the puppies all around me. But I wanted to show you what my knitting was. It's like a dark red. It looks brown on camera, but it's definitely like a darker red. So my lighting is not fabulous, but I wanted to show the tree in the background because I think it's super cute. So I did read like 20 more pages of uh, The Princess and the Rogue and now. So I could have sworn it said Edinburgh, but that was like in my head I made that up. It's Everly. I don't know where I got Edinburgh from. I just like swap those in my head. So they're still in England, but his great aunt was like, well, why don't you take her and protect her? Cause they almost got like attacked by highwaymen. So they're about to stay together and he's supposed to protect her and he doesn't trust her. So it's going to be really good. So I'm really, really loving the book so far. I can't wait to read more, but I do have a couple questions that I wanted to answer because I'll probably only update you one more time. We are going to watch Survivor at eight. It's seven ten right now. So I will do one more update after Survivor because I'm going to read during commercials and then probably edit some of this during in that though. So I'm not up too late editing again, but someone asked me my favorite hobby besides reading and running. Um, do I have any other hobbies? I like to knit like I just showed you. I watch a lot of TV shows and movies with my sister and I bullet journal now. I didn't bullet journal a lot, but I sew a lot too for my Etsy shop and uh, not too many other hobbies. So that's just what I do. Let's see, pros and cons of being a high school teacher. I don't know that's really putting me on the spot. I will say we were talking about it at my staff meeting today. This year is the roughest year ever. Like last year was tough, but now that kids are supposed to go like back to normal, they have lost skills they're supposed to have. One being coming to school on time. It is so hard with tardies this year because kids don't know like timeliness and the fact that things need to get done on time like I've had the most late papers ever because they were used to two years of being online turn doing things what at your own convenience turning it in whenever and we were a lot more lenient and so that's kind of set a precedent that they think is still happening like how many kids don't do well on a quiz and like well I can retake it right and I'm like no it was your quiz like you knew when it was and you knew when to study for it like that's how school works and so um, it's really hard this year. I definitely have seen it and it's been the year that I was the least excited to start the school year for which never happened It's my seventh year and I'm always super excited when the school year comes around and I just was not excited to go back to work this year I did when I saw the kids like I was super excited when they came in for open house and like I get excited about teaching them but just I don't it's hard to explain without being a teacher yourself to understand it so I do think that I love 
the 45 minute periods. I don't know how elementary school teachers do it. I love seeing my kids for 45 minutes and like rotating kids throughout the day. They are high schoolers though, so you gotta deal with that. So I don't know like really how to answer this question. I chose high school for a reason because like I like high schoolers and I love that age and I'm not teaching like the fundamental things. I don't know how elementary school teachers do it. Middle school is just an awkward age. So I love high school, but it, I will say it's like really hard to be a teacher right now. I've seen so many teachers quitting from TikTok and I get why they're fed up. I mean, I'm lucky enough that my kids aren't that bad. They are definitely a lot more hard to rein in than any other year, especially last year. My kids were fabulous. They just like listened so well, got everything done so well, did so well on their test. Like that was my highest test scores I've had was my last year of teaching this past year. So this year I'm super worried about their scores. They're a lot lower than what I've had. I do teach, um, I'm talking about my enriched kids. They're like probably the lowest I've ever had because they've had two years of not full on genuine instruction. Even though we were in person, most of last year it was still a lot of them weren't actually in school a lot of them could choose to be online so some of them were so yeah i don't even know where i was going with that but that's my answer to that question how did i get into reading i've always been a reader my mother always took us to the library we read so much growing up and i've just always been a reader like since elementary school i've loved it so i've always bring a books with me even like in high school i'd bring a book with me and i remember i don't remember if it was ninth grade or if it was middle school i would like literally read during lunch because i was sitting with a group i think this is middle school i had a group of friends that i like liked enough but like we weren't super close that I ate lunch with and I just sat with my book and read so I've always been a reader Someone did ask what do you listen to your audiobooks with speed? I do three times speed. I talk fast Probably once a week I get a comment from someone telling me to stop talking so fast and I just ignore it because that's how I talk I can't control it and when I try to talk slow. I forget and continue talking fast. So sorry, you can slow down my videos if you think I talk too fast, but I do listen at three times speed because I'm just a fast processor, fact talker, you know, it just works for me. If it's an uh, accent though, I have to slow it down. Like Scottish accents, I gotta slow down a little bit. Someone asked what countries you wanna visit. I definitely wanna go to Italy at some point. That would be really cool. And France and Spain maybe would be really cool, but I'm terrified of going to a country where I can't speak the language because I've only gone to out of the country to um, England, Ireland, Scotland, and like Caribbean islands. So I only go to places where people generally speak English. So I'm a little nervous to feel out of my element going places that I can't speak English to. We'll do a, uh, well, I've been talking for a long time. How about what's the first historical romance that hooked you on the genre? I honestly cannot remember. I know I was reading some, I read some Elizabeth Hoyt way back when, when I was in college. And I know I read a Lorraine Heath. It was like seven years ago, I read a Lorraine Heath and absolutely loved it. So I don't remember what the first one I picked up was, but I've always like generally been a fan of historical romance, but I would only read a couple a year. And it definitely was last year. And like just quarantine that made me obsessed with historical romances like last year it blew up that summer of 2020 I was just reading and buying so many historical romances I went from having like two little cubes on my bookshelf to two whole bookcases of historical romances so I definitely Kerrigan Byrne helped with that as well and that's what I don't even remember what one like really hooked me it was just like I fell in love with it. And I always had said like, I love historical romance whenever I read it, when I would read it occasionally and I just never got super into it, but then I got really into it. And it's just like all my friends were too, so that really got me into reading historical romance. Then my last one will be um, your favorite drink. I don't like coffee. I don't go to Starbucks. It said like Starbucks or other cafes or stores. I don't go to Starbucks. I drink hot chocolate and I love it. And I put like the caramel syrup in it and it tastes delicious. I also drink ice drinks. My sister and I love these. I drink one like almost every live show I'm in. And then Diet Coke. I'm obsessed. I can only drink one a day, but I love, love Diet Coke, which I have at lunch and then I have water. So I'm a super morning person, so I don't need caffeine. When I tried coffee in college, I was like a jittery mess and I, and I hate the taste of coffee. So I don't like coffee and I don't need caffeine. So yeah, my favorite drink is definitely Diet Coke, but I love these and what I say? water and hot chocolate so those are my drink choices but okay i'm gonna stop there and i will continue on these questions in my later videos but i'm gonna go get to reading and watch some survivor maybe talk to you about who my favorites are yeah let me know if you watch survivor and who you're rooting for because i'm loving this season but yeah i'm gonna go read and talk to you later 
Hello everybody, it is uh, about nine o'clock. Lily's gonna come with her ball because she's nuts. She did not get a walk yet. Hi baby, oh you're so good. And so um, I need to wrap this up. I did finish editing everything else so this is the last thing I need to edit but I read about 30 more pages and it's still so good. She's staying with him and she's helping him like translate stuff and there's definitely tension between them and I'm loving it so much. I am so excited. I'll probably finish this tomorrow if I can. I have what 200 pages left so I want to read more tonight and get through more but that's all I had to update you on that. I do want to say that for Survivor it's crazy how things flip like there was an alliance and now they crumbled because they turned on one their own alliance and now it's a completely different alliance and I think I want Xander to win. He's been playing such a good game and still has an idol so I think that's nuts and I get annoyed with characters though characters I get annoyed with players who just like ride through the whole game and don't do anything and that's Heather this season she literally was just on the tribe that won every immunity challenge and never had to vote anybody out and now she's just there she just thinks that she's playing a game and I'm like Heather you're only there because you're not a threat and no one's gonna vote for you in the end that's literally why she's there so I think Xander should win I really really love him I don't want to say anything else to spoil last night's episode but it is annoying when people are on the bottom and they're like well I'm gonna go home and I'm like do something like try to change an alliance try to make something up try to just spend the entire time looking for an idol like what are you doing so that was really annoying that that's happened multiple times this season like well I'm on that bottom and try to talk to the people on the top into like not voting for them I'm like, okay, but try to get someone else on the top out, but it's okay. But I have uh, high hopes for tomorrow's reading. I'm so excited I'll be finishing this and finishing Lorraine Heath. It's going to be a good day tomorrow, and it is my Friday tomorrow, so I'm very excited. Let me know what you finished so far for the readathon. Also, someone asked where I got my Lisa Kleypas sweatshirt. That's in our bonfire shop. We have merch for the historical romance readathon, and if you're interested in buying anything, I'll link it down below, but that's all I have. So yeah, I'm going to talk to you guys tomorrow, and thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.